Hello and welcome to the Smarter Tech Podcast and Videocast now on YouTube and BitChute. I'm Nick, the EMF guy, Pino. I'm the author of this book. Let me fetch it. Ugh, there I go. The non tinfoil Guide to EMFs. If you're listening to the video version, it's going to be way better, by the way. So go to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to tell you about the phone gate scandal. This is, you might have heard about the diesel gate, where Volkswagen, multinational giant company, hid, or some people at Volkswagen, to be fair, hid uh, test results as far as how much pollution their cars were emitting. And it led to an international scandal, billions in compensation, and now Volkswagen, in fact, is more popular than ever, ironically. This scandal, the phone gate scandal, is way bigger because we're talking about a scandal that touches every single human being who uses a cell phone around the globe, which is in the billions and billions of users. So the user base of cell phones is way larger than the user base of Volkswagen. So it's something you want to hear about. And I'm going to tell you in this video, in this podcast, why your phone might exceed the re regulatory limits as far as wireless radiation goes by many times over the limit, up to 11 times if you believe the independent tests. Let me share my screen for a second. Click, click, click. There you go. Listen to the video version again. It's going to be way better. There we go. These are slides from the professional level EMF protection course or EMF education course, if you will, that I created in collaboration with scientists, EMF mitigation specialists, and many other collaborators worldwide in 2018. It's called Electrosmog RX. There's two slides I took from one of the main uh, of the first presentations, how cell phones are tested. So the mannequin head you see on the right is called SAM. Uh, it's a specific anthropomorphic mannequin, or SAM. Uh, that's uh, the little name we, we give this mannequin. So SAM has a bigger head than 97% of cell phone users, which is, first of all, anyone who has a brain realizes that this is not right. It should be equivalent to the average cell phone user, or we should test it on smaller heads if we are to put safety limits for children, for example. So right there, there's uh, the first uh, layer of nonsense, if you will. It's filled with water, salt, and sugar, and you have a probe that reads uh, the temperature increase inside that salt, sugar, and water brain, and basically it's deemed safe if it doesn't go up more than one degree Celsius in temperature, and that's how your cell phone is tested. You have a probe that goes inside a mannequin head, and they say, no, it doesn't overheat, and it's fine. But water, salt, and sugar is actually a very poor reflection of how radiation is absorbed into actual humans because you've got a skull and you've got uh, blood, you've got different tissues and they each have different degrees of absorption or the opposite, different degrees of non-absorption, if you will. So it depends on the impedance of the different tissues and many researchers have argued that this model is completely broken. You've got a 5 to 15 millimeter separation from the head. So they, they have a fake cell phone there, and it's uh, separated by 5 to 15 millimeter from the head. Again, not like what most people do. Most people use it on the ear, on the body, in the pocket, in the bra, and, well, right next. So no separation right next to you. Exposure of six minutes, actually six to 30 minutes, depending on what type of uh, test we're talking about, but these are uh, North American standards. It's six to 30 minutes. But again, a lot of people use it for more than that. Let's switch slides here. How people actually use them? Well, a 2015 survey, this is actually one survey. So you could say, no, there's no way this is accurate. It's the American Academy for Pediatrics. So take it. Uh, as face value if you want uh, or not, but 
a lot of four-year-olds these days have their own mobile device, whether it's a smartphone or a dumb phone, an older cell phone. That was uh, this survey in particular was in a poor uh, Philadelphia neighborhood. So chances are that the market penetration there in young people is higher because concerned parents uh, righteously give their children a cell phone for safety reasons. That being said, they don't necessarily teach their children. They probably don't teach their children how to use it uh, more safely. So they use it on the head again, and it's a big problem, as you'll see. Children heads will absorb up to two times the radiation compared to adults, and their bone marrow can absorb up to 10 times more. Again, this is heavily referenced. There's many scientific studies about that fact. And uh, it's concerning. It's not addressed in our safety standards. When tested on the body, so no separation, 90% of cell phones exceeded the FCC radiation limits. That's the US FCC, of course, by up to 11 fold. And you can see here the link down below. And that's the phone gate uh, scandal that I'll get into. And the average cell phone user in 2018 uses a device for more than five hours daily. Oh no, even if, even if this is just one site that provides stats and it's three hours is bad enough because we're testing them for six to 30 minutes. Nothing to do with how you use them. And we're talking about one single device. So I might have a phone, a tablet, wearable here, wearable uh, in the neck or chest strap or something. If I, I exercise, I have a Bluetooth thing. Um, I might have multiple devices at the same time on my person. Our standards just talk about one device, six to 30 minutes. So we're in trouble. There's early research on the biological effects of microradiation, which I talked about in a previous podcast about the early uh, research. You can find it on that very channel or that very podcast, depending on if you're listening to the audio or video. And there were indications back, back in the 40s, but even before that, that non-heating effects can appear or are biological facts. Uh, so that's important to mention that because a lot of people are stuck with the idea that only heat matters. So therefore, if you take the mannequin head and you, uh, you test a cell phone at maximum power output and you realize that, uh, well, the head or the so-called mannequin brain, if you will, does not overheat, it means it's safe. In reality, there are countless indications in the hundreds, if not thousands, of peer-reviewed papers that show that the non-heating uh, biological effects also matter, like DNA breaks or oxidative damage or even reduction in sperm quality. All of these happen at uh, basically without any overheating. So we should also consider these effects in that entire discussion. Is that why... We've got papers like these. 2011, IARG, that's the Internal, uh, International Agency for Research on Cancer. That's a branch of the WHO World Health Organization, right? 2011, they classified uh, radio frequency radiation. This is your cell phone. What we're talking about, wireless radiation, cell phone, tablets, Bluetooth, smart meters, anything that connects wirelessly falls into that, including the cellular networks, the towers, and, and the entire infrastructure. It's a class 2B carcinogen since 2011, but they were lacking at the at the time, right, group 2B. So that's a, that's a possible carcinogen. This is the lowest classification you can get in the carcinogen. So some people say, hey, it's not a big deal. This is not real. This is not serious. Where we lacked a few studies, especially animal studies, to classify it higher. And guess what happened? In well, we have nine studies that increased risk of brain cancer that showed an increased risk of brain cancer from mobile phone use from 2011 to 2017. And there are even more than that because this paper is already a little bit older from Miller et al, three years old, and there's even more evidence. And based on the evidence reviewed, it is our opinion, right? Scientific opinion. The other scientists 
maybe do not agree, but I can tell you this group of independent scientists, uh, Miller, Morgan, uh, Odison, unfortunately I'm not familiar with, but Dr. Uh, Dr. Davis from the Environmental Health Trust, they're esteemed, they're independent. Uh, Dr. Davis has been uh, co-laureate for a Nobel uh, Peace Prize. Uh, Anthony Miller is a world top class epidemiologist and can when it comes to cancer and toxins. So it's not anyone who says that and many of the their colleagues agree that it should be reclassified. So you've got a carcinogen near your face or I could argue it's a carcinogen already, but let's say we're, we're going to let science and policy dictate that over the next few years. It all led to that phone gate scandal. Basically, you've got a French um, a French doctor, Dr. Marc Arazi, Dr. Arazi right here, who looked at independent tests from the French government on random cell phones, many, many models. We're talking about hundreds of different phones. And what they found in 2015, that was from the ANFR, National Frequencies Agency in France. Uh, it was actually at the time 95 mobile phone. Eventually they did more tests. So now we're in the hundreds of phones that have been tested. Nine out of 10, 90%, that's a pretty bad record right there, exceeded the regulatory threshold in Europe of two watts per kilogram. This is the SAR. That's just the measurement of heating in tissue. So again, it's not a perfect measurement of biological effects of that, let's say, electropollution or their wireless radiation, but it's, it's what we have at the moment. So we can argue about that, right? In one in four, 25%, the threshold of four watts per kilogram. So it was uh, well over the limit. So that's a big problem, right? Because these tests uh, basically were taken on the body with no separation, but the cell phones up until July 2016 were measured at 15 to 25 millimeter from the skin. So this is a big, big, big problem. And when it comes to testing, it's a little trick that allows manufacturers to uh, overexpose you uh, because they want users to be satisfied with connectivity. Of course, I don't think there's necessarily uh, an evil intention there. I, and I think there's a lot of denial about the health effects. Let's look at what Om P. Gandhi said back in, uh, let me see, what is this one? This one is 2011, Electromagnetic Biology and Medicine. Uh, Gandhi et al., again, the same offenders, Morgan, Dr. Lee Davis, uh, DeSales also, who's from, uh, let me see here, I don't want to uh, butcher it, Brazil. That's right. So several colleagues from around the world who wrote basically, well, you know, cell phone, uh, cell phone radiation, it's, 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 it's too much in children because we're underestimating how much they absorb based on everything that I told you about. The SAR, right, the radiation absorbed in tissue or the heat absorbed in tissue for a 10-year-old is up to 153% higher than the SAR for the SAM model. So in other words, SAM is a completely insufficient and inadequate model to assess radiation limits. So this is what happened, right? This is something that confirms it. And Om Pigendi, following this, uh, the scandal, well, looked at the uh, what exactly what happened, and now the National Agency NFR in France, in when this was received and accepted March uh, 12, 2019, they were up to 450 cell phones. Uh, basically, that used uh, that used a distance between the mannequin head and cell phones. So they said, well, their data, basically the data that was found by PhoneGate, is is correct. And when when we look at no separation, your cell phone exceeds the limit 1.6 to 3.7 times if we follow the European standards. But if if we convert that to another standard that is our standard for Canada and North North America overall, uh, by the US FCC, it goes by a factor of up to 11 fold over the limit. So I'm not making this up. These are engineers and Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, the University of Utah. So complain to Om Pigendi if you, you don't agree with that. 
but we're talking about facts here. But where did I, where, I, 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 I saw that a few years back, and I could not remember wh exactly where, and it was by CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting uh, Television, and uh, Cell Phone in Your Pocket, CBC's Marketplace investigates why you might reconsider. Basically, the CBC, uh, in, a, in a brilliant uh, uh, reporting by Wendy Me uh, uh, Measley, basically looked at the same issue. They said, well, why is it tested with a separation? And when they uh, looked at no separation in a private lab that agreed to do the testing with no separation, here's what they found. So again, same thing. When you use it on the body with no separation, it goes over the limit by up to multiple factors. So it's incredible. You, you have a limit and you're not supposed to go over that, but it goes up to 11 fold more than the limit. So to me, it's, it's completely mad. And to you, it probably is just as equally as shocking. Chicago Tribune, Chicago, sorry. It's my French Canadian accent coming true. August 21st, 2019, this hit like a brick uh, in 2019. I remember that summer seeing that news and was like, oh my God, finally, other investigative uh, reporters that actually do their darn job are looking at this. We tested popular cell phones for radio frequency radiation. Now the, NCC, the FCC is investigating. We'll see if that happened, right? Uh, hint, it did not happen. Uh, nothing, nothing that I heard from them since then. What they did is exactly that. They took Apple, uh, Apple iPhone 7 at the time, which was one of the latest, um, and they tested it independently with no separation or with little separation. Here's the results. Apple iPhone 7, 2 millimeter from the body, 7.15 in their test, watts per kilogram. So that's the SAR we talk about. The limit is 1.6, right? They all go above the limit. They tested multiple phones. They tested in a different, uh, you can read the entire article. All of this will be in the show notes for this episode or under the video if you're on YouTube or BitChute. So it's, it's all there. The federal exposure limit is 1.6. It all goes way over the limit. iPhone X, Two millimeters from the body goes over iphone 8 goes over by many many uh, uh times many fold two millimeters from the body 5.37 again the limit is 1.6 and the limit itself is way insufficient right it's not sufficient for children it's not sufficient for adults 97 percent of cell phone users have bigger heads than these standards so it makes no sense these standards are completely outdated and borderline useless to protect you and yet, they fail the safety testing right there. Wow. And the iPhone 8 Plus, oh, it actually passes. Fun. Sam Samsung Galaxy S9 completely failed. S8 completely failed. G3 completely failed. The Moto completely failed. So I can go on and on. This article is just as shocking as the phone gate, but it just, it, it just corroborates exactly what they found, what was found in France, right? So that, that's very, very simple. Uh, it just confirms everything that we already know. Here, radio frequency exposure. Here's uh, something, it, IEEE spectrum, right? Electrical engineer, engineers at the beginning of, t of 2020, uh, conducted by uh, the company, a uh, testing company, Penumbra, found the same thing. Uh, they, they have uh, the basically Penumbra Ch Chief Technology Officer. Actually, uh, it's Penumbra Brands, uh, and they decided to run an independent test basically for, um, for their website here, which you can see right here. And basically, guard mobile devices and the people who use them. And that's, that's their... That's their uh, their mission here, and I, I'm, I'm not aware of more of that. Uh, I should have uh, done more research about that company, but I'm glad that they did it. Uh, Penumbra's test found that an iPhone 11 Pro emitted 3.8, double, more than double the limit right there. So basically, they found the same thing. And what they, what they did, again, is that at test the phones with little separation, and they found the same thing. So again, 
uh, Apple responded to these guys, Chicago Tribune, back in 2019. They said, oh, well, maybe the tests are not accurate and blah, blah, blah. They kind of just dodged with some PR. Uh, but the same thing has been found again. So you've got phone gate alert. You've got Om Pigandi and scientists that look at the results and say, yes, this is accurate. So this is shockingly accurate. Uh, then you got the CBC. Then you got the Chicago Tribune. Then you've got Penumbra and their independent tests. And then you've got uh, also a few studies that also show how uh, unacceptable our safety limits are. What this study found, the discrepancy between maximum in vitro exposure levels and realistic conservative exposure levels of mobile phones, blah, 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 by Schmidt and Kuster. Uh, and that was relayed to me by uh, Darius Lysinski, an EMF um, researcher uh, scientist who's uh, still very, very active. Basically, it says that. The, the analysis demonstrated that exposure of skin, blood, and muscle tissues may well exceed 40 watts per kilogram at the cell level. So basically, they said we might be in trouble because certain tissues are more exposed than others. So that reinforces what I told you at the beginning, that the fact that the brain is, uh, or that the mannequin had... Uh, supposed brain is water, salt, and sugar might be a very poor reflection of how much certain tissues and certain types of cells are exposed at the cell level. Phone gate, um, things are progressing a little bit since that initial scandal, but a little bit too slowly for my liking, but I'm hyperactive, so I like things to, to be sorted out in a few years, and I know these things take time, but it did lead to changes a lot of phones have been removed from, from the market after the phone gate scandal, and there's been a lot of heat at the French government too, but all over Europe, in fact, and Dr. Makazi and his uh, collaborators have been touring Europe and trying to make change happen on the governmental level, because it's really what needs to happen is that the governments need to impose these limits and to independently, independently test the phones, and we also need to take into account uh, non-heating effects. So these are two separate debates, but when it comes to phone gate, you've got a decision from the administrative court of Rome, which said basically uh, w users are getting overexposed, and uh, the the government was forced to try to to start educating its citizens about how to use phones more safely. So I'm gonna have Marc Arazi uh, hopefully in a few episodes from now on this show. I'm gonna ask him the hard questions and uh, see what's happening with PhoneGate and how it's evolving. I can tell you that at the moment, early 2021, the PhoneGate alert Wikipedia page in France has been deleted. Uh, with no reason, with no apparent reason. So there's been a lot of controversy, a lot of pro-industry people who think this is not serious, even if we're talking about several sources of independent reporters and, and labs that confirm these shocking results. Uh, they've been censored, and I, I think there's huge financial incentives for the industry to keep fighting this and uh, dodging and avoiding and these kind of classic tactics. So that's very unfortunate. And in the meantime, what I hate about this is that it's up to you users who use a cell phone who want to live a healthy life uh, to do what I, I, I told in my book back in uh, 2017, The Non-Tinfall Guide to EMFs. Uh, well, use your cell phone in a safer way, right? You can find it on Amazon or all around the world. Or there's this course I created with Brian Hoyer, Electropollution Fix. And who cares about these products? You can uh, encourage my work if you want, and you can buy the book or the course. And these are educational solutions I put in place to try to make the topic easier to digest, to learn from, and then to apply this information. In the end, you know what you should do about PhoneGate? You should encourage them. You should talk about it. So that's the activism part. But as far as you and your family and how you handle your cell phone, don't use a cell phone on your body. Do not have a device that's touching your body all day, every day. The science is in, it does not look good, and the long-term health effects is what we should all be more worried about than anything else in this entire scandal. So create distance, talk on speakerphone, talk with earbuds, 
any any earbud will that that's wired and non bluetooth will do the trick and start there if you want to go further, look at my book, look at the course, or look at other resources online. There's so much good information on there that is getting, unfortunately, it's getting attacked by a lot of people who don't want to, uh, who think this is fear-mongering. It's not fear-mongering. It's preventative medicine, right? It's pre preventative steps for your health. So do not take chances with your phone. Use it at, the, at a distance with prudence. Use it less often. Prefer using an Ethernet connection with a computer such as the one in front of me right now and go from there. But aim to minimize your exposure. Uh, I hope you like this episode. Like I said, in a few episodes from now, I'm going to have Dr. Marc Arazi, who's a French physician, who is behind this entire phone gate scandal. And we're going to go even deeper in the topic. So I hope you like it and I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.